everyone welcome to let's crack upsc csc english about me i'm sandeep bhushan i have 8 years of teaching experience for civil services i teach international relations internal security and analysis of hindu newspaper and this video is in regards to how to crack prelims 2020 and prior to that you have a notification that subscription of india's largest learning platform an academy subscription for to crack upsc csc english and then by subscription you would have access to unlimited live and recorded courses from india's best educators you would also have the other privileges like daily live classes where you can chat with your educator engage in discussions ask your doubts and then also be part of the answer polls you also have live tests and quizzes where you can evaluate your preparation with our regular mock tests and quizzes and get detailed analysis on your performance you also have structured courses wherein all our courses are structured in line with upsc exam syllabus which will help you best prepare you have also unlimited access upon subscription you get access to all our live and recorded courses where you can watch from either mobile or from the laptop you have top educators at an academy subscription you have sudarshan gurjar ayush sanghi prakash kumar and runal patel you also have special classes by dr roman saini sir dr siddharth arora lokendra chavan rakesh sharma and ashish malik you also have upcoming courses which are lined up in our an academy subscription platform they are capsule course on 250 multiple choice questions for upsc prelims you have comprehensive course on public administration you have capsule course on geography optional you also have let's crack upsc csc 2021 and when it comes in regards to the learner subscription for upsc csc you have 12 months of subscription wherein the original price is 40000 you have 24 months wherein the actual price is 52000 and when you can you can use my code sbt10 and by using my code sbt10 while subscribing you will get additional 10% discount so on 12 months for 40000 you will get 10% discount that would be coming around to 36000 and when you subscribe for 24 months using my code sbt10 you would get additional 10% discount wherein the price would be slashed to 46800 from 52000 so it is always said that for preparation of civil services you need to go ahead with preparation for at least minimum 1 to 2 years and then 2 years solid preparation is essential for any serious candidate to crack civil services so hence it is recommended that you go ahead with a subscription for 24 months wherein with the 24 months you are actually getting benefit and you would be paying for 24 months only one year plus one month of the amount you would be paying for 24 months i repeat you would be paying for only one year plus one month amount for 24 months that is for two years so take the maximum benefit of the offer and then do subscribe an academy subscription you can also view not only my classes but all the other top educators in all the various other subjects and get the maximum benefit from the an academy subscription and then now we'll get into the analysis of the hindu newspaper and the topics to be discussed today are private labs panel on sc and st that is scheduled caste and scheduled tribes 20 to 24 weeks ssc to pc and then you have the sbi report so we will get into the first topic or the news item wherein the news here the icmr director general he talks about or says that 51 private labs will soon be allowed to conduct test so what kind of test yes we are it is obvious that we are talking about the test in regards to the coronavirus covid 19 and then it is very important and essential to make sure that we contain the spread of virus by making sure that we go ahead with the preventive measures in regards to having the 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 measures of washing hands 
regularly and then making sure that we have the face mask covered face covered with the mask and then also in regards to the social gathering should not take place or distancing of the uh, people and then making sure that in spite of all this the government has come up with going ahead with the test whoever feels that there is some kind of or there are the symptoms of coronavirus then they would go ahead with the test and then what is important is the test was actually or initially be conducted by NIV Pune that is National Institute of Virology so when the when the incidents are been emerging in India in regards to coronavirus it is very important that the government takes up the measure that we try to increase the number of tests or the or the institutions wherein the test will be taken at a larger pace at a very high pace to make sure that many of them who have been <clears throat> part of the uh, system that they have been contaminated and then it is possible that the test have to be taken place at the initial stage to make sure that it doesn't spread and then by making sure that after the test if it is positive then we have to quarantine the person also quarantine the related persons who have been associated with the one who have been tested positive so it is very important that test is crucial at this juncture to prevent the virus so that the virus will not spread virulent in india because as we all know that india is the second largest populated country in the world we have experienced what has happened in china so we should be very clear that the same kind of situation we should not experience but we should come out of it and then <clears throat> make sure that the tests are conducted and the preventive measures are taken care properly more of education has to take place how we can try to prevent the spread of coronavirus so in that regards we will look at few <clears throat> points here the director general of who tedros adhanom ghebreyesus has said that what is important what is the message that he would give to all the countries is at this juncture is that he has said test 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 so what is important is we can try to make sure that the spread of virus doesn't take place virulent by the process called as test 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 that means test is very important and by testing we can go ahead with making sure that who is suspect i mean who is the suspected one that he would turn up to be a uh, <clears throat> possible that he could be the one who would be spreading the virus in the in the community so by testing we can try to quarantine and then make sure that the spreading is not in a very fast manner and then the director general of indian council of medical research balram bhargava has also said in contrary to what the director general of who gabrasus has said he said that test 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 prescription of who is not for india that means it says that whatever director general of who gabrasus has made a statement about the importance of testing is not really important or it is not really prescribed by who and it is not for india especially because he say, says that the director general of icmr says that community transmission again a keyword here community transmission has not still occurred in india uh, so as the community transmission has doesn't has still not occurred in india so we need not really fear about going at the importance or the imperativeness of test 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 so that would really create a kind of kind of panic so we should come out of it we should not have any kind of fear or panic but still what is important at the need of the hour is to make sure that we prevent or what are the measures to prevent the spread of the virus and icmr has also announced that 51 private laboratories who, which are accredited to national accreditation board of for testing and calibration laboratories that is nabl so again a prelims point of view <clears throat> icmr has come up with the 52 private laboratories which are accredited to nabl when soon be allowed to test covid and then the the number of the functional laboratories will be increased to 72 these will be under organization so all this all the uh, first initial 52 and the later 70 51 and the later 72 laboratory organization will be under the organization of csir that is a council of scientific and industrial research 
and also under the Department of Biotechnology and also under the DRDO that is Defense Research and Development Organization. Again, this also an important for Prelim's point of view, <clears throat> wherein this laboratory organization will come under which, of the, which among the following organization that is CSIR, Department of Biotechnology and DRDO. And then ICMR has also released a preliminary report of its testing in regards to or the community transmission and it says that the samples which they have picked up that is 1020 and out of that only 500 have been tested negative and then this indicates that this third stage of transmission <clears throat> third stage of transmission of all tested negative so the preliminary report talks about the statistics and then india has also witnessed only imported case what the icmr says is at this juncture we have the report or the cases which the india is experiencing is only in regards to the imported cases that means the one who has been or the citizens who have been uh, uh, traveling from various countries and then coming to india they are the one who have imported the virus and they are the one who have actually been part of the test uh, which has been proved that they have been negative and it also says that India witnessed very limited local transmission from imported cases to their immediate contact. So at this juncture, ICMR says that it is not a very big worry of what the WHO DG has said in regards to test, test, test. And then ICMR has also scaled up its testing operation. So even though it is not imperative or it is not that we need to panic or we need to have fear about how it is really important in regards to testing each and every one, but still. On a, on a positive note, the ICMR has increased its testing operations and it has revised the testing guidelines. So, at the need of the hour, even though we need not panic, but still we need to be fully prepared, equipped totally. And then in that regards, ICMR has gone ahead with revising the testing guidelines, which includes testing norms for healthcare workers. So, it is not only the one who has been <clears throat> affected or having the symptoms, but it is a need of the art to make sure that the testing norms are for even for the healthcare workers. So, who are the ones who are looking after the parents? Patients with respiratory distress. And the other one is the in regards to the revised norms. And the revised norms specify that all asymptomatic, that means the one who are not showing any symptoms, the patients who are not showing any symptoms who have taken international flights in the past 14 days should get tested. So the new one is, the earlier one is only the imported case what we have thought, but the new one is the one who are coming into India or who are being part of the diaspora who have been, who have been into India, even though they are asymptomatic, that is showing no symptoms, but still they have to make sure that they have to be tested, even tested if they develop symptoms. And also symptomatic people who come close in, in contact with the close with the laboratory confirmed cases must also be tested. So ICMR is not just saying that test is not really important but at the same time making sure that all the machinery in regards to testing is kept in place to make sure that there is no fear that the people has to have the panic or and at the same time making sure that the entire medical equipment, medical uh, uh, operation is intact, testing operation is intact and then we can make sure that the spread of virus is contained. And then you have a next one in regards to the panel on SCST. So there is a panel that is a parliamentary panel which has made a report on SCST. So, According to the information provided by the Union Social Justice and Empowerment Ministry, Union Social Justice and Empowerment Ministry to the Parliament. So it is very clear that the, the panel, the parliamentary panel makes a statement that state level committees and also in regards to the district level committees have not really implemented or it has not really gone ahead with the kind of implementation it has to take place in regards to scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. So, according to the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes prevention of atrocities act 1989, you should have at least even once in three years, you should have the meeting or there has to be an 
and and meeting which takes place which actually looks into the implementation of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes prevention of atrocities act 1989 so again prelims point of view this act is important so but if you look at the report it says that at the state level committees 25 states and union territories which were meant to but they haven't even met even once in 3 years that is in 2016 2016 17 and 2018 so this is a, a very grave concern in regards to how the government of india or the concerned ministry is trying to look at it and then try to have the concerns resolved or the grievances being resolved in regards to scheduled castes and scheduled tribes act 1989 and the state level committees in regards to scsts have will be represented by the chief ministers and they are supposed to meet twice a year so at least twice in a year the state level committees which are headed by the chief ministers have to have a meeting but we have seen the meetings are not really happening and then maximum 25 states and union territories did not have at least once in 3 years the meeting and in 2016 we have as per the report there were two meetings of the committee in haryana and one in karnataka and west bengal so we have seen a little bit a positive that there were two meetings in haryana and one each in karnataka and west bengal in the year 2016 as per the report and in 2017 chatisgarh gujarat karnataka kerala west bengal and puducherry has held a meeting at least once each and the rest states of union territories did not even have a single meeting in the 3 years so it's it's a very pathetic situation wherein the it has the committee has revealed the report the way the parliamentary panel or the concerned ministry is supposed to at the central and state level have the meetings and then look at what is actually happening in regards to the the scst funds which have been allocated at different levels in regards to education in regards to startups and in regards to employment generation so in 2016 and 2017 reports very clearly states that there there has to be done lot to the meetings which are to be taken at central and state levels and when we are looking at in regards to the report of the district level committees and it is mandated by the rules that it had no meetings as per the report they had did not go ahead with any meetings in 3 years in assam arunachal pradesh meghalaya mizoram and all these states they haven't gone conducting any meeting not even a single meeting in the last 3 years so the report which has been submitted by the union social justice and empowerment ministry or the parliamentary panel to the ministry and thereby again submitting a report it very clearly states and this is the the <coughs> points wherein it is also useful for the prelims point of view <coughs> you have another news item which talks about abortions so the lok sabha has passed a bill which raises the limit from earlier 20 weeks to 24 weeks so earlier as per the medical termination of pregnancy amendment bill 2020 it was only the limit for permitting abortion was only 20 weeks but now it has been passed the amendment bill 2020 is been passed in the lok sabha and then what is the new update amendment is that the i mean the permission for the abortion the limit upper limit has been increased from 20 to 24 weeks that too only in regards to the special categories so we will look at what has happened or what how the bill has been passed and what are the changes in the lok sabha it has been passed that is the medical termination pregnancy amendment bill 2020 this is again an important question for prelims 2020 and this bill seeks to amend the existing medical termination of pregnancy act 1971 that means initially there was a medical termination of pregnancy pregnancy act 1971 
and this act is been amended by the medical termination of pregnancy amendment bill 2020 and this was passed by the lok sabha by the voice vote make sure for the prelims point of view here all the information of the bits and the bill amended bill is to extend as we discussed that the upper limit of permitting the abortion from 20 weeks to 24 weeks and that too only in regards to the some specific or special circumstances and then what we will just look at what were the <coughs> points or the concerns or the uh, points made by the couple of them in the Lok Sabha. A member from BSP has made a statement said, saying that abortion should be considered as a fundamental right of women. This is again a, a, a new uh, thought or a statement which can be considered that whether India gradually down the line will it consider the abortion as a fundamental right of a woman or else there could be a question in the mains based on the I mean, passage of the medical trans termination of pregnancy amendment bill 2020 whether there could be a possibility in the future that abortion would be or should be considered as a fundamental right of women discuss comment so again prelims and mains point of view this bill is important and then in regards to the a lawmaker in, uh, from Trinamool Congress has said that this bill is in right direction <clears throat> and it all and he also I mean the the the, the lawmaker also says that an anomalous fetus could be identified by ultrasound scan. So it is it is obvious that the fetus can be identified by the ultra scan within 16 to 18 weeks instead of 24 weeks. So why wait from I mean up to 24 weeks? Because there could be few situations as it is mentioned special circumstances. So there could be few circumstances or special conditions wherein there has to be taken into consideration some kind of judgment by the Supreme Court because of various scenarios the abortion is to be taken or it is must the abortion has to take place so in that regards 24 weeks has been extended no doubt the fetus can be identified within 16 to 18 weeks and after 16 to 18 weeks slowly the fetus starts having I mean the life so there is another contradictory that once 24 weeks then slowly life is actually I mean the formation of life takes place so if you are aborting are you killing the life of an individual or a baby is a question mark okay we will not get into it but the fetus right I mean can be identified within 16 to 18 weeks but it has been extended to 24 weeks and this explanation what I had made is because that there could be few circumstances or special condition why it has been ex extended from 20 to 24 weeks. So we will look at the salient future features of the bill which has been <coughs> amended in the house 2020. The one which we are talking is the medical termination of pregnancy amendment bill 2020 and then the features are it proposes a requirement for opinion of one provider please understand the salient feature is that it proposes a requirement for opinion of one provider for termination of pregnancy if it is up to 20 weeks of gestation. And it, the other feature is that and it has also introduced the requirement of opinion of two providers. Here one provider, here in this case the opinion of two providers for termination of pregnancy, for termination of pregnancy of 20 to 24 weeks of gestation. So when the gestation period is only of 20 weeks, then the requirement is that only one provider can go ahead with the opinion 
but when it is in regards to the termination i mean in regards to the gestation period is of 20 to 24 weeks then the opinion has to be two providers so salient future again here when we are talking about the features again bear it in mind it is very essential for the preliminary point of view 2020 and then enhancing the upper gestation that is from 20 to 24 weeks for special categories women has been clearly defined in the 2020 medical termination pregnancy amendment uh, rules which could include who are the one who are special or special consideration or special circumstances that it has been increased from 20 to 24 weeks the gestation period is the vulnerable women is the vulnerable women including the one who has been raped or the survivors of the rape and then who have been the victim of incest so when we are talking about incest that is the sexual which takes place in regards to the it could be between the family members it could be between uh, a fa father and daughter or brother so this kind of situation is a special circumstances and other vulnerable women like differently abled women or minors so the amendment bill is very clear about the reason why it has extended the limit from 20 to 24 weeks is because of the vulnerable women who are or who could be that they are or they can be they can approach the court and the courts can later on decide based on the vulnerability of the women and then even though when when the when this what do you say the women vulnerable women has approached the court and then if it if it has even crossed that 18 weeks and then 20 weeks also still there is a possibility that depending upon the special circumstances the abortion can be considered so that can be considered only for the vulnerable women of what we have discussed here again preliminary point of view important and the upper gestation limit not only apply in case of substantial fetal abnormalities diagnosed by the medical board so not only to in regards to vulnerable, vulnerable women but in case there is the fetal abnormalities when it has been diagnosed by the medical board and then in in regards to the fetal abnormalities it could be a possibility that it could be a threat to the life of the baby and also to the mother so in that scenarios yes it is taken into consideration that the required a 20 to 24 weeks also can be taken into consideration and then abortion can be declared by the concerned authority or the competing authority under the rule of law the composition functions and other details of medical board to be prescribed subsequently in rules under act so here when we are going ahead with the <clears throat> talking about the abortion in regards to fetal abnormalities it has to be under the rules under act and name and particulars of a woman whose pregnancy has been terminated shall not be revealed this is the one of the feature which is making very clear that the the women or the mother name and identity will be protected and it will not be revealed and it will make sure that the vulnerable women will be taken into consideration and given protection so again for prelims point of view the medical termination of pregnancy amendment bill 2020 and then its salient futures are very important and then from we have the another one which talks about sc upholds the rights of women in of, of naval officers rights of women naval officers so we will look at what is ssc i mean now we are talking about the it is a shift or move from, from ssc to pc so what is that move from ssc to pc that is from short service commission 
to permanent commission so it is from the short service commission to the permanent commission the supreme court has upheld that means it has supported the right of serving sh short service commission women officers of the navy to be granted permanent commission on par with the male counterparts so it's a very good move very good judgment by the supreme court making it very clear that the women officers in the navy are granted the permanent commission once they complete the short service commission so the short service commission the women officers in navy completed who have completed will have the chance or will are are that they can again get into the permanent commission so we will look at the judgment given by the supreme court and the justices dr justice dy chandrachud and ajay rastogi they both have said in regards to the <clears throat> endorsing the judgment they have said that the battle for gender equality the battle for gender equality is about confronting the battles of mind please understand this you never know the same statement could be in the mains and then it says explain the battle of gender equality is about confronting the battles of the mind based on the supreme court verdict there could be a possibility that upsc would ask a question even in general essay even in general essay that the battle of general gender equality is about confronting the battles of mind discuss comment so we need to know what exactly the supreme court verdict and then on what basis the supreme court verdict has taken place so here the dy chandrachud and then ajay rastogi has made this statement and then this is in context to the armed forces and then specious reasons have been advanced by decision makers and administrators that means in the past there were many i mean reasons and then there were many decisions which were made by the administrators and the decision makers that why it is not required that or why it is not allowing the ssc or the women navy officers once they complete the short service commission that they would be granted the permanent commission so they were the, the the reasons which they were they have given is all baseless and inaccurate so what the judgment says is the earlier reasons given by the government of central government is that all are baseless and inaccurate and what is important is that it ranges from physiology motherhood and then physical attributes to the male dominated hierarchies so what is important in regards to the battle of the mind is that the male dominated hierarchy has to be actually taken into consideration that there has to be battle in the mind that it is not the male dominated it is the male and the female equally having the gender equality and then making sure that both men and women are in the army serving the nation as a male navy officer and then again a women navy officer together working for the country and the judgment was based on the case filed by 17 women sh short service commission officers and then they were chahal they have challenged based on the february 26 2008 policy letter so what is important is the judgment has been forwarded or verdict has been given based on the case which has been filed by 17 women uh, ssc officers who were denied the permanent commission in spite of completing their 14 years of ssc service so in spite of 14 years they are supposed to give the or they, they are supposed to grant the a permanent commission but as they were not so and it has to be done based on the 2008 policy letter of the government which very clearly states that that 2008 policy letter states that granting of pcs that is permanent commission to ssc officers 
in all the three branches of the armed forces so this is very clear again again in regards to the prelims point of view which policy letter which year policy letter talks about the granting of pcs permanent commissions to ssc officers once they complete the the 14 years of service that is in the 2008 policy letter the offer was restricted to certain categories actually it was meant to all the three branches of armed forces but it was restricted to certain categories and then <clears throat> it was to operate prospectively for the benefit of future basis so as it was inducted in january 2009 so after 2008 policy letter there was another which was policy letter which has come up in january 2009 which talks about that the offer was restricted to certain categories and this was to operate prospectively for the benefit of future batches and then the other one which talks about is the slew of direction that is many or various directions which has come if you look at or if you look at the various judgments the court the court has quashed so here the court has quashed what it has quashed the policy letter of september 26 2008 suppress the court quashed or it has suppressed the stipulation in the policy letter of september 26 2008 making permanent commission for women prospective and restricting the application to specified cadres so here in 2009 it was only to certain categories but actually in 2008 policy letters it was for all the three branches of all the armed forces 2009 to certain again in whatever was again taken up in september 26 2008 it was quashed and then it said that it will not be but it will be to only the specified cadres branches of the navy so here when we look at what kind of women empowerment is happening and then here when we talk about women empowerment here it is right now the rights or the else from ssc that is short service commission to permanent commission in navy prelims point of view and then you have a sbi report <clears throat> and then here sbi report is again in regards to the the kind of impact on gdp because of the covid 19 and aftermath or else in regards to the way the impact of the covid 19 is or would affect on the gdp and then the the report what the sbi has come up saying that the growth will be impacted or it will be truncated by 90 bps that means all almost equivalent to one percentage basic points 90 or 90 basic points which will which is almost equivalent to one percentage so we will look at the sbi report which has which sbi has come up and then it talks about how best they can try to make sure that they come out of the negative impact of the COVID-19. So the COVID-19 has impacted especially on the transport, tourism and hotel industries. And when it has impacted on the transport, tourism and hotel industries, it is very clear that the impact is on the economic growth. And because of the impact that is a negative impact on the economic growth, especially on the transport, tourism and the hotel industries, it is equivalent to the 90 basis points. That is almost one percentage of the GDP. One percent of the GDP. It's a very big, huge loss. And then the report says that in regards to the demand side, the one it is in regards to the inoperability analysis. Again, specifically in regards to demand side, the RBI when it is talking in regards to inoperability analysis for three sectors that is again tra transport, tourism and hotel industry, it shows significant impact on demand. It shows significant impact on demand and hence output also it shows. But demand is there but what kind of supply we have is a big question mark. So the other report, I mean, uh, the other point of the report is in regards to the impact of 5% inoperability shock. So here we were talking about the inoperability analysis which has been done by the SBI 
Indrik has to demand, sub, demand side and this 5% inoperability shock will also as mentioned it will impact the economic growth up to 90 basis points and it is impacting or it will spread over the entire financial year 2020 and 2021 it is a <clears throat> greater impact of the on the spread of the covid 19 wherein the transport tourism and hotel industry has been badly hit and this badly hit will impact negative on the economic uh, on the gdp and once the gdp is impacted it will follow or spread across the financial year 2021 and the larger impact is to happen in the year financial year 2021 so that means now we are in 2020 another one year impact is bound to happen on the economy <clears throat> and it would impact the gdp since china is an important source of critical imports many sectors have the shock that is what kind of shock it is a supply shock so earlier when we just looked at we had looked at the demand demand side so there is a <clears throat> the report which talks about the or which talks on the negative side of the demand wherein here it talks about 5% inoperability shock and now we are i mean the report also talks about the supply shock and because of this supply shock it could lead to higher price of inputs definitely when there is demand when there is shortage of supply ultimately the prices shoots up and which in turn will affect the price of all the commodities which fall under the ambit of the supply chain again a keyword supply chain supply shock shock and then demand so simultaneously demand and supply shock to the economy will also have implications for the on the banking sector so what the rbi report says is it is not just the demand supply and the prices will impact but this everything demand supply and the prices impact will have an implication on the banking sector definitely on the banking sector and the demand side shock demand side shock is expected to lead an output loss of 1.2 percentage in banking and insurance companies so again this report this point of the sbi report is also important for film's point of view that means how much impact would be on the banking sector why i'm saying so is we have seen recently the s bank total collapse and then total uh, i mean insolvency which has taken place and then liquidity crisis which has taken place and then sbi coming to the rescue rbi coming to the rescue on the sidelines of it if the question is asked in the prelims the demand side shock on the on the on the on the basis of the covid 19 there is an output loss of 1.2 percentage in the banking sector and insurance so you would ask which among the following percentage 1.2 percentage or 1 percent or 2.2 percent or 3 percent or whatever it is so we need to know it is 1.2 percentage loss for the banking and insurance companies and then it is also proposing an additional revenue the report is also proposing an additional revenue due to increase by excise duty on petrol and diesel so we all are aware and i will once again repeat here that the global crude oil prices have come down at slashed because of saudi arabia and russia saying that we will not stop the production we will increase the production as the increase in production is high the demand is low the demand is low because of the covid 19 the demand is low the production is increasing then what has what will happen is the prices will shoot down so the prices have slashed down when the prices have slashed down so whatever we are actually purchasing the crude oil from the various oil companies or oil uh, rich countries our income i mean the expenditure on the particular bill will reduce crude oil bill expenditure will reduce so once it reduces the expenditure reduces so we are having some kind of what you say additional revenue 
so <clears throat> when the prices are slashed on actually even the prices of the petrol and diesel across the states and across the country has to be reduced but it is not reduced it is almost at a certain point what it is actually now but it has to be at this price so whatever this gap of the price the amount is actually been generated revenue is been a generator or it is being helpful is being used by this uh, what do you say rbi in the form of excise duty on each and every one on the petrol and diesel on the consumers and that will increase up to 35000 crores to 40000 crores so it is very important that that has to be actually the, the slash in prices crude oil slashing prices have to be uh, made sure that the benefit has to be brought down to the end consumer but rather than that at this moment when the global economy and the indian economy is slashing and it is impacting the financial year 2021 and also further it would impact or it would continue to the further financial year 2021 so at this juncture the measure what the rbi is taking up is to increase the excise duty along with the central government to increase the excise duty and to generate the revenue up to 35000 crores to 40000 crores and this will be spent on providing relief to people who are at the lower strata so what why why the uh, it has to be <clears throat> provided as a relief to the lower strata because because of the 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 economy is slashing the economy is actually detroiting as it is heading towards a kind of kind of i'm saying kind of recession so when it is heading to a kind of recession then it is very clear that many of the small industries or small manufacturing units would shut down their companies or ancillaries so in that scenario when there is shutdown of commercial activity in the states this money will be used as a loss of income being provided to the lower strata and then the last point is the current covid 19 outbreak a combination of monetary and fiscal policy so the report says that it, it i mean we cannot come out of it or we cannot have a sufficient liquidity in the market only by monetary policy or fiscal policy we can have a sufficient liquidity in the market and we can go ahead with controlling the <clears throat> slashing down of the economy or the gdp should not further go down by making the monetary and policy fiscal policy both taking into the best option and then we can try to contain the gdp or the slash in the gdp so i hope the analysis of today's hindu newspaper was helpful informative and knowledgeable and to prepare for civil services 2020 films 2020 so you please like please subscribe and then click on the bell button for further notification when you are watching the video youtube video of let's crack upsc csc english and you can also go ahead with subscribing the unacademy subscription you can use my code sbt10 that is sandeep bhushan tumala 10 and then you can avail 10 percent discount by using my code thank you see you tomorrow at 8 30